I'm a sucker for bare bones, basic, classic looking motorcycles. They're pretty easy to ride, usually pretty affordable, and make a great blank canvas for customization. In late 2021, a new player arrived in Philippine shores, wanted to take a bite out of the ever-growing motorcycle community. So let's find out a little bit more about the Mat Akita 250 in this episode of Beyond the Ride. During the launch late last year, this unit immediately caught my attention. It's really my preferred style of motorcycle with its minimalist design. I love the shape of the tank. I think it really does stand out and it goes well heading towards the seat, which also looks really good. You can see the stitching the, and you see the logo of Mutt right there and appreciate the attention to detail. And if you look closely at the brackets of the mud guards, these are actually handmade. When you're closer to the bike, you really appreciate the build quality. I think it is pretty top notch. It does feel super solid. In fact, I don't think it's that far away from a very popular brand like Royal Enfield. It's got bullet style indicators, which are LED, nice taillight, which is halogen, a black aluminum low rise handlebar, grips, halogen headlight with the black grille. It's really all very good quality. The dash is very basic, just give you all the necessary info you need, which goes really well with the aesthetics of this machine. It really does have that custom appeal. All the stuff that I would have done to a motorcycle like this, they did it already, and they did it better with quality parts. Although, I would have preferred bar and mirrors. You get 18-inch wheels with stainless steel spokes and black aluminum rims with knobby tires, which I think really goes well with the theme of this MC. The bike is powered by a 250cc four-stroke single-cylinder Suzuki engine that makes 21 horsepower and 18 newton meters of torque. Keeping bumps at bay, you get a telescopic fork up front and twin shocks at the rear. It's got a seat height of 780 millimeters. I am five foot six with a 764 millimeter inseam. And that's the situation. Not bad. The fuel tank capacity is 17 liters, which is pretty impressive. It's actually bigger than two of my big bikes. And the fuel consumption is pretty impressive as well. It's 42 kilometers per liter. Of course, it depends on how you ride. It's got a dry weight of only 140 kilograms, which will also make it pretty easy maneuvering in city traffic. In fact, when the bike was delivered to my place, they didn't need a ramp to get it off the back of the truck. Let's do a quick sound test. The seat looks absolutely fantastic. The stitching is uh, really nice. I like the lo little logo in the back. But like most custom bike seats, it's not very comfy. In fact, it's really hard. Although I have to say that the shocks do soak up the bumps fairly well. The ergonomics are super neutral. Nice and chill with the mid controls. I do like the ergos of this bike a lot. The brakes work really well, both front and back. And it's also nice to know that it's got ABS. There really isn't that much vibration. I mean, there is, but not so bad. A lot, a lot better than I thought it would be. I mean, it, that already makes it unlike most smaller displacement custom bikes I've ever ridden. And the dash looks nice and minimalist, but I have to say this. When you're riding, it also looks very miniature. I can't see uh, the, the numbers too well, but you know, it's, you're not really supposed to look at it anyway, but I like, the, I like the aesthetics, but I think it's the, the functionality probably could have been a little bit bigger. Um, I don't know, I mean, it's, when I wasn't moving and I just looked at the dash, I was okay with it. I actually preferred it, I liked it, but now that I'm riding, it's kind of a little bit on the small side for me. It really does feel more premium than I thought it would be. I'm pleasantly surprised, I really, really am. It's been a while since I've been in Intermuros, the walled city, and, I have to say, like, this place really does have so much character. So much history. So what type of rider would the Akita attract? 
well, yeah, the, the hipsters. The hipsters would definitely like this bike. Um, I, I think for, for beginner riders, it's a nice stylish bike to learn on. I also think if you just want a bike to ride around the city and not be a scooter or an underbone bike, this is also a very good alternative. Now, if we look at the competition of this bike, uh, at least somewhat where the, the price range is, you know, you're really looking at maybe the Yamaha XSR155, the Svart uh, 200, uh, to a certain extent, because we're talking about custom uh, style here, maybe the Motorstar Cafe 400 even. I mean, these, those are the type of bikes you'd probably in the vicinity of this bike in terms of price. Uh, those, those bikes are a little bit more affordable, but this is also, go, this is also just a little, feels a little bit more premium than those. It's definitely a head turner. At first glance, you may think it's one of the other manufacturer bikes that are typically customized, but when you really look at it and you look at it for a long time, you appreciate it even more. You see the detail and it becomes a little bit more attractive the more you look at it. I know there's a pillion seat or a room for a pillion and there are rear foot pegs, but I don't think this is made for two people. I'm sure if you really need to, you could put the back rider there, but probably just for really short distances. I don't think this is something that I would take uh, somebody on the back here. Now, because this is a new brand in the country, I really can't comment yet on the maintenance. It's too early to tell. But because it's a pretty basic bike with a Suzuki engine, you could imagine that it shouldn't be that difficult to maintain it. There's really, it's really no frill. So I, I think it should be okay. Now, theoretically, it should be okay, but until we have some time with the bike, until the, the brand has been here a little bit longer, that's really the only time we'll really know how the maintenance is of this bike. It's a really nice bike to just take around on a Sunday, you know, ride around the city, make your way to Intramuros, and just enjoy the sights, you know? It's, it, it does have, for a 250cc, it does have decent power. It definitely can get up and go for a bike of its displacement. It's not gonna scare the socks off of you, but it's just nice to cruise around the city with this, with this bike. I did mention the detail, right? So, I mean, it's nice that it has the, you know, the bash plate, it has the, you know, uh, the, the branded uh, bar ends, it has the nice mud guards. It has all these nice little touches to the bike. And I think when you're thinking about a custom style motorcycle, it's really what this is, right? The owners of Mutt, are custom builders. You know, that's how they started. And then they just decided to put up the brand to be able to, you know, they, since they thought, you know, they customized bikes so, for so many years, they thought, why don't we just make our own brand? And that's what Mutt is. That's how they came about with this uh, type of motorcycle. And something I have to say, like, you know, other custom bikes out there typically found in the Philippines, you know, once you customize it, or even when you purchase the bike, it's usually not brand new, and then you customize it, there's no more warranty. And with this bike, if you buy it, you know, you still have the warranty for a couple of years and that's added bonus, right? So that's, that's less headache for the first few years of owning this bike. If you like custom bikes and you, wanna, you want that style, that's something you need to think about whether you would buy a brand new custom bike, so to speak, or customize your own. And also, you can still add a couple of things to the bike, you know, there's, there's other accessories that you can throw in and add to this to this machine that work really well with, with the bike out of the show. So now the verdict. Well, I think Mutt did a stellar job with the Akita 250. I think it's very tastefully done and I just like the bike. However, I do have some slight reservations with its pricing here in the Philippine market. You see, the custom scene in the Philippines got so big that we can pretty much customize anything. I can get a used Keyway CR155, spend 35,000 Philippine pesos, and customize that to my liking. Or maybe a Rusi 250 Classic. But I'll say this. I just think that this bike is very well done with very nice parts that I would strongly consider, if I had the extra cash, to cough up 250,000 Philippine pesos to get one. For more information about this bike and other MCs out there, log on to www.motodeal.com.ph. This has been Gene Rufino for Beyond the Ride.